so now uh, what happens in the small intestine how does the digestion occurs in small intestine well the uh, as you as i told you there is complete digestion of food in the small intestine and uh, various the organs and secretions are involved in the digestion of food in small intestine organs and secretion and their secretions are involved first of all we'll talk about liver secretions now before that let me tell you uh, there are three secretions which are involved all right first is liver secretions second is pancreatic and third is intestinal all right all right so the three organs which play a role in the digestion of food are liver pancreas and intestine itself so liver secretions pancreatic secretions and intestinal secretions take part in the digestion of food in small intestine now first of all we we'll talk about liver secretions well liver sec <coughs> sorry liver secretes two things bile juice and bile salt all right it secretes bile juice and bile salt i have already told you about bile juice what is the function of bile juice it converts acidic food into alkaline food all right the function of uh, bile juice is to convert acidic food which came from the stomach into alkaline food and what is the function of bile salts bile salts helps in the digestion of fats all right it helps in the digestion of fat as you know in mouth there was digestion of starch in stomach the uh, digestion of protein occurred so in liver there will be digestion or oh, sorry in small intestine there will be digestion of fat by bile salts all right now this fat the fat that is present in our body is present in the form of large globules or large droplets it is very large in size now we have to break this large globules into smaller one which is uh, uh, the uh, bile salts helps in the breakdown of the large globules into the small globules now this small globule is called emulsified fat all right it is called emulsified fat and this process of conversion of large globules of fat into small globules of fat is called emulsification all right this whole process is uh, this whole process is called as emulsification so we have talked about the liver secretions now we'll talk about the pancreatic secretions and the intestinal secretions uh, first of all pancreatic secretions now the pancreas the pancreas they secrete pancreatic juice all right the pancreas pancreas secrete pancreatic juice This pancreatic juice contains two enzymes, trypsin and lipase. Okay, this pancreatic uh, juice contains two enzymes, which are trypsin and lipase. Now, these two enzymes functions differently. They have different functions. Talking about trypsin, now trypsin helps in complete digestion of protein. Trypsin helps in complete digestion of protein, whereas lipase helps in complete digestion of fat. or emulsified fat all right i have told you about emulsified fat are the large globules were broken into smaller globules uh, these smaller globules were known as emulsified fat all right so uh, trypsin helps in the complete digestion of protein whereas lipase helps in the complete digestion of emulsified fat now trypsin has uh, broken protein into more smaller particles whereas lipase has broken fat into more small particles all right now uh, talking about the third secretions of the small intestine which is secreted by the intestine itself these are its own secretions so they are called intestinal secretions all right because they are secreted by the intestine itself now this intestinal secretions again secretes intestinal juice as our pancreatic secretion secreted pancreatic juice which had two enzymes similarly intestinal secretion secrete intestinal juice which has three enzymes all right it it further has three enzymes amylase 
lipase and protease now what are the functions of these uh, enzymes now first of all amylase amylase break down the left starch or carbohydrate you know the starch was broken into smaller particles in the mouth whatever uh, are the leftovers or uh, this amylase break down the starch into more fine particles all right more smaller particles lipase it breaks down the fat all right and the protease it further breaks down the protein all right so amylase it breaks down the leftover starch or the lipase breaks down the left fat or the fat which is left to be broken down or into more fine particle and the protease it breaks down the protein now we can say that our food is completely digested so here the food is completely digested so that is why i said the complete digestion of food occurs in small intestine all right now the food has been completely digested now it is ready to go to the large intestine the function of small intestine is over here it has completely broken down the food now it will transport the food to large intestine now we we'll look what happens in the to the food in the large intestine okay so uh, now talking about the large intestine now as i told you the food has been completely digested in the small intestine all right so now uh, it will move to the large intestine well before moving to large intestine the absorption of food occurs now the food is completely digested in the small intestine so it will get absorbed in the small intestine only all right so how does the absorption of food occurs in small intestine well the the walls of the small intestine they have finger like projections like our fingers there are projections in the small intestine okay there are something present in the small intestine which looks like our finger so these projections are called villi what are they called villi all right now the function of these villi is to absorb the food as i told you absorption of food occurs in small intestine it helps it occurs with the help of villi villi helps in the absorption of food in the small intestine now the food is digested as well as absorbed in the small intestine now comes the large intestine now uh, the undigested food all right so you know in small intestine the complete digestion occurred and also the digested food got absorbed now the food which was unable to be digested by the body which is undigested food which we were not able to digest or our body was not able to digest it goes to large intestine now what happens to this undigested food now the food has water in it all right this water gets removed or absorbed all right so this the water from the undigested food gets removed and the food becomes solid or hard the food becomes solid all right now this is the waste now this food uh, the solid undigested food we we'll call this food the solid undigested food it goes out through anus all right it leaves our body or exits or goes away from our body through anus now um, there must be something to uh, help in the removal of food from the body all right so this uh, removal of food occurs by anal sphincter all right for example i told you uh, in stomach when the food was going from stomach to small intestine it uh, went through a door okay a sphincter similarly there is also another door here which is called anal sphincter and it helps in the removal of uh, uh, this undigested solid food from our body through anus and the uh, undigested food moves out of the body and this process of removal of undigested solid food from anus through anal sphincter is called as ejection all right this process is called as ejection so that is all about digestion or digestive system in human beings so this is what happens to the food all right the useful food is digested and the undigested food goes out of the body so that is all about the uh, nutrition in organism or digestive system in uh, human beings this 
summary of whatever we have studied about the nutrition in human beings. So as you all know, our human digestive system consists of two parts: alimentary canal and digestive glands. Alimentary canal has further various parts. Uh, first of all, mouth. The uh, food enters through mouth. and in mouth the teeth help in grinding the food into smaller particles all right also in mouth the breakdown of starch happens by salivary amylase now salivary amylase is a enzyme secreted by salivary gland which helps in breakdown of starch or carbohydrate now the food uh, when it is broken down in the mouth it goes from esophagus or food pipe to stomach now stomach it has gastric gland Which secretes three things: HCl, pepsin, mucus. Now, what are the function of these three things? HCl it is hydrochloric acid. It is it is very acidic, and it converts pepsinogen to pepsin. Now, what is pepsinogen and pepsin? Pepsin is, is an enzyme. All right, it is an enzyme present in gastric gland, but this enzyme is not present as pepsin. It is present as pepsinogen. It is secreted in the stomach as pepsinogen, which is inactive form. So it is it is converted to active form by uh, active form which is pepsin by HCl. So HCl helps in converse, conversion of pepsinogen to pepsin. Now what is the function of this pepsin? Pepsin helps in breakdown of protein. As salivary amylase helps in breakdown of starch, pepsin helps in breakdown of protein. And the function of mucus? Well, the as HCl is very acidic in nature, so mucus protects the stomach from the harmful effect of HCl. so that hcl does not harm our stomach all right it does not break the stomach so this is the function of mucus to protect the stomach from hcl now after this after the protein has been uh, digested here and the protein has been break down broken down the food moves to small intestine now this uh, a sphincter or a door helps in movement of food from stomach to small intestine now as you know the food is acidic in nature so now this acidic food has to be converted into alkaline because the small intestine has a pancreatic enzymes which cannot act in acidic medium or like they need alkaline medium so in small intestine first of all the food is converted from acidic to alkaline through bile juice bile juice they are secreted by liver so bile juice helps in conversion of acidic food to alkaline food now small intestine as you know stomach uh, had these three secretions similarly small intestine it has it also has three secretions liver secretions pancreatic secretions and sorry <coughs> intestinal secretions now liver further has bile juice and bile salts pancreatic secretions are trypsin and lipase enzymes and intestinal secretions are amylase lipase and protease enzymes these two things secrete enzymes whereas liver secretes bile juice and bile salts now once the food has been uh, completely digested in the small intestine it is ready to be absorbed all right once it has been digested it will be absorbed by the body now the process of absorption occurs by villi villi are finger like projections present in the walls of small intestine now in small intestine absorption of food occurs once the food has been absor absorbed in the small intestine the undigested food which has not been digested goes to large intestine all right now large intestine now the food that comes to large intestine it has water in it all right so now the water is removed from the uh, food and the food becomes solid hard now this solid undigested food is removed from the body through anus by anal sphincter again there is a sphincter which helps in the removal of food from the body or exit of food from the body this is called anal sphincter and this pro <coughs> process of removal of food from the body through anus is called ejection all right this process is called ejection so that is all for this topic thank you